and you notice that we're not at the church. Uh, I tell you, I'm on a search tonight to find the man that made this pen. Now, the bullet came from my uncle's house in Pennsylvania. We were coming out, uh, cleaning out the house, and uh, we found this bullet, and I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could get a memory of, of, of my uncle using this bullet? And I found a guy to do that, and he made it into an ink pen that we can write with. So would you like to meet this man? All right, well, let's go inside here. We'll meet the man who made this. He may look familiar to you, by the way. He's over there. Right here. <laughs> How are you? Hi, I'm doing well, great. Well, I guess we're going to have to yeah. keep those candy. Keep that uh, uh, safe distance away, right. like social distancing. Now, Neil, I'm glad that you're here, and I want to find out a little bit about you, but I told the kids that you were the one who made this pen, and I wanted to find out a little bit more about how to make pens like this because this is a really neat thing. Now, I know we don't normally see you making pens, uh, we see you singing, don't we? Right. Tell Not so many people see me making pens. No, exactly <laughs> right. So this is going to be exclusive, isn't it? <laughs> All right, now, tell us, uh, I know you sing at church, but you sing a lot of other places too. Tell us some of the places you sing. Oh, well, I've, I've sung gospel music since I was four or five years old. The first solo was when I was six, uh, singing with two brothers. And uh, every day during devotions, it was... Uh, mother and daddy and all three of us boys around the piano singing hymns during you know during devotions and uh, the three boys continued to sing at different churches and homecomings and this this and that and the other and then that just evolved into choral and which evolved into quartet which evolved into solo uh -huh. work and so I've God bless my, my ministry in, in so many different ways musically uh, that it's just it's hard to, to really hit all the areas because of I've, I've really been fortunate to have sung gospel music all over the country I've seen in churches um, all over right uh, I've sung in, in England for 10 days oh, hey. and then I started uh, um, doing the national anthem back in the early 90s and that really has turned into a to, to a program of its own because it's not just a local thing either. You know, you've been, uh, I've I've been very fortunate. I've sung in in five major league ballparks throughout the country. I've sung at, at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Uh, there's I sang the World Series, uh, not the Major League World Series, but the uh, American Legion World Series last uh, last fall. It's just, it really has turned into a it's major league here in Salisbury, isn't it? Uh, uh, American sure. Legion ball. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, I've seen a lot of Legion ball games, and I had the opportunity to go to the, to the World Series last year. So we know you're singing. Now tell us what you do to make a living. Um, well, I work for a third party oversight agency. It's, it's somewhat confusing unless you understand what third parties do. But um, my responsibility is to go into manufacturing facilities and pull the quality manual, the production do documentation, and quality documentation to make sure that the companies are doing what they say they're doing. And uh, so it's an oversight. Okay. And uh, so they hire us to come in and perform oversight inspections or audits uh, of their facility and their, their systems. Now, kids, if you didn't understand what he just said, ask your parents <laughs> to interpret it. And parents, if you didn't understand what he said, Make sure you ask me. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like you're, you're a singer. You do that oversight management. But we want to try out about these pens because this is a rare thing. I, I love my pens. Uh, I've got a couple. So tell us well, where it starts. The, it started with that pen right there. Ah. <clears throat> it's very similar to the one that you uh -huh. got. This, this, both of these are shell casings uh, right. from funerals, and right. this is actually a shell casing from my father's funeral. Oh. Uh, he passed away back in 2016, and they did a 21 gun salute, and they presented the, the, the shell casings to my mother, and I wanted to keep that memory alive, and so I decided, okay, it feels like a pen to me. 
approached a friend of mine. He helped me uh, get in touch with the right person to, to, to process the casing. And uh, then I went to his house and put the, uh, the cap together by, on, on the lathe. And this is actually purple heart wood that I use for the, oh. for the cap. Daddy was a purple heart recipient. Uh -huh. He actually hit Omaha Beach on D-Day mm -hmm. and was wounded in France about two months later. It's a very special and, uh, So, yeah, it, I made this pen. I thought I'd, that would be the only one I ever made. And that was over 208 pins ago. 208 pins ago. <laughs> and, uh, it started with, a, with your heart. Right. right. Really nice. And I uh, made one for my, my brother and my mother. And uh, then my brother's two sons. And uh, just so they could, they, they could all have part of daddy. Oh, that's great. What, what a great memory. What a great, great way to memorialize his life. And every time you use that exactly. pen, you were reminded of that. Exactly. Now, that, did, that pen didn't just appear. There's a lot of work that went into that pen. Could you take us through the well, process? Absolutely. All right, that would be great. Uh, and there, there, there's some other pens. There's uh, there yes. all styles of pens that I do uh, and different materials. This is uh, woods, of course. Uh, this is an olive wood from Bethlehem. Uh, the acrylics, uh, if, you, if you're in the colors, then you're, you're, you, you get into exotic colors of all kinds. Um, and uh, but the the woods, some people are, are really uh, really like the woods because of the feel, because of the look. Uh, mm -hmm. But the ladies in particular um, seem to like the, the acrylics because of the color. Now that one you just put your hand mm -hmm. on, that's actually uh, Mother of Pearl. Oh yeah, it's, it's got little ridges in it. Right. I like that. <laughs> now you were talking earlier that this is actually Sandra, your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she 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 really got interested in in the the pen turning uh, whenever I started working on acrylics because she's really uh, she really loves color she loves mm -hmm. colors that pop and she actually picked out uh, all of the the uh, the colors that uh, all the, the different uh, styles or different colors that you, that you see there and then there's also this one that. Um, I kind of keep in this own little <laughs> carrying like case. The case. It, it's, a, it's, it's a familiar looking case. <clears throat> yeah, it's, a, it's a rifle case for those deer hunters out there that you know. And it's actually a pen made like a, you know, it's got camouflage on it, it's got the deer head on it. And actually the action is just like the action on a rifle. You push that down, the ink cartridge comes out, you release it and it goes back in. <laughs> so if you, you can get a deer pen, even uh, in your own little rifle case to go with it. Oh, how about that? Now, your, your wife obviously has an eye for color and things like that. You also have to have an eye for color and things like that when you choose the wood. Well, it's, I, I look for woods that, that have, uh, have special meaning. I look for woods that have a lot of grain. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the olive wood from Bethlehem has both. It's a, it's a very uh, you know the story behind the wood itself and then the grain is just gorgeous um, mm -hmm. You know this pen here. It's actually a fountain pen um, And it is made out of wormy maple. You can actually see one of the wormholes on, on Oh, on the yeah, I of. see that right there uh -huh. And uh, you know, yeah, it, yeah. it just depends on uh, what what's available and what people bring me now? Uh, what I'm what I'm working on over here. Yeah, is actually that pin right there is mm -hmm. actually wood from the platform at the church. Oh, so there's a piece of our church here. Right now, if we go up to that platform, will we see a hole in the <laughs> stage? <laughs> no, actually, the, I talked to the contractor uh, whenever they were building the whenever he was doing the renovation. And uh, I told him what I was doing. I actually showed him one of my pens. And he, I said, what are you gonna do with the drops? And he said, I'm just gonna toss them. And I said, no, hang on. Uh, hang on to those for me. And so here's one of the drops, just to give you an idea. Um, that pen started off like this. Uh, I cut it down to this. Uh -huh. And then I cut that down to this. <laughs> That's a lot then, of I went, then I went from this to the lathe, and I, I, I turned everything on the lathe. Huh? And uh, so, do you want to see? Yes, yeah, show us how that works. <clears throat> well, the, the lathe is all about you know spinning and, and taking material off to get uh -huh. the shape that you want, and you actually determine the shape that you want by, before you ever 
why, before you start or while you're working on it. But, uh, you know, pardon the noise and uh, let me. Yeah. Uh, let me you work. You want some safety, safety glasses? glasses on? Yes, thank you so much. And, I appreciate uh, that because I'm going to lean in and look at it. start chopping on the stone and anything that doesn't look like an angel I remove. Exactly. So and that's exactly the same thing here. So sometimes you make things by removing as opposed to adding. Well plus the fact that each pin is unique. There's no two pins that I've made out of the 200 plus that I've made uh -huh. that are exactly like one, uh, like another one. Because there's, I don't use a pattern. Uh -huh. The pattern's in my head because Sandra came out when I first started doing this. She said well how do you know uh, what to cut? I said, well, I, I cut it until it looked like a pen. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. so, and that's exactly the way I do it. Everyone is unique. It's kind of like us. Right. We're all unique. Exactly. Even though we make uh, all the pins over here have a similar kind of shape, <laughs> but every one of them that you make is going to be different because of what you do on the file and what God does in the stone and the wood. Right. Marvelous. Marvelous. Now, what happens from here? Well, actually, in this pen, I will, you know, I will finish it up, uh -huh. the shape of it, and it'll, it'll be something very similar to that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And this is the wood from the, from the platform. Okay. Uh, this is the, the same color, the stain from the platform as yes. well. Yes. And uh, I, will, I will put the stain on it, I'll sand it, put the stain on it, and uh, then put a finish on it to protect it, and uh, okay. so, it so it doesn't... Uh, dry out and split and it's more comfortable in the hand. I like that. And I remember when you gave me mine You asked me fit fit my right. hand. That's great. And uh, so it's uh, it, What it boils down to is everybody's hand is different and everybody likes a different size pen I make different size pens and people normally pick out what they want But when I made your pen and the rest of the ministers, I wanted to make sure it was comfortable to them so uh, I actually got their input on the size pen that they wanted. Uh, it's interesting. You do your work so we can do our work. That's a great way to... to... <clears throat> but then at this point, uh, I'll, I'll bring it over to the press. Uh -huh. and, uh, I'll just show you one of them. Uh, I see a lot of metal around here. This is the tip. Uh, and... This is a pen press. Huh? Oh. It just fits right on there. Look at that. Like it's supposed to. It's amazing. <laughs> it's almost <laughs> magic, isn't it? I guess it just takes the right hands and the right tools, doesn't it? Uh, and then the pen will look similar to that uh, and that's your pen actually. I start to say I, this is pen that's awful <laughs> familiar and I've used it quite a bit at the church uh, I don't want many people to know I've got one uh, they will want one in fact you might get calls after this well then, as long lovely. as they don't take yours that's exactly right <laughs> mine is fitted to my hand now Neil I, the, what did it take to learn how to do this there was a friend of mine who, who I found that was a pen turner and when I came up with the idea for daddy's pen 
I called him, went over. He had a lathe, uh, and he started, well, I had the, the barrel uh, that I had, was ready to use, and I said, okay, let's make the cap. And he had the purple heartwood, and he had the equipment, and he put everything on. He said, do you want to make this, or do you want me to make it? And I said, well, I'd love to make it if I can, but I've never used a lathe. And he showed me the basics, let me cut on a couple of things, and I made the, the cap myself. And he told me before I, before I picked the tool up the first time, he said, now you understand, this is very addictive. You will have a lathe before it's over with. And I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to make one pin. And actually, this is Daddy's lathe. Oh, how about My dad that? was a woodworker and a carpenter. And when I was cleaning out his shop, this uh, yeah, I uncovered this and got it set up to where I could make pins. So every pin that I make, has got a little bit of daddy in it. Oh, that sounds great. Well, you know, that, that brings up a good next question. This is, it has been a ministry to me. I wonder, how is what you do here a ministry? Well, it's just like you were saying, the, there's, there's, uh, there's something in that wood. There's something in, in, in the fact that you, you have preached off of that same wood. Mm -hmm. uh, you have ministered. People are come to, to know Christ kneeling at that altar and on the bottom steps in front of that platform where, where that wood came from. And just like the, the olive wood from Bethlehem, we know, we, we know what happened in Bethlehem. We know the history of Bethlehem. And every time I turn a pen that is out of that wood or out of the church's wood or out of a piece of wood that somebody brought to me that, that's meaningful to them, then that gives me an opportunity to, to find out a little bit more about them. Thank you so much for showing us all this. Uh, we always, at the end of our program, uh, ask for prayer for not what you do so much, but you and Sandy. So is there anything we can pray for you guys about? Um, in terms of playing yeah. over uh, It just so happens that it's, it's perfect timing, I guess. Sandra's actually going to have a knee replacement in, in September. And uh, so if you you could pray for for her, uh, you know, the doctors and the nurses and for her and for particularly, you know, after she comes home, and I've got to take care of her. Yes, we're um, going to pray for you. Sandra's <coughs> over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we will pray for your knees and uh, you stay off your knees and we'll get on ours for you. There you so go. We can do that. And then I did start a new job this week. Yes, uh, so I would appreciate prayer for that. We will certainly do that. Uh, you have shown us and taught us about uniqueness and about molding and shaping and how God molds us and shapes us like you shape the wood over there. He creates us all unique and then he shapes us. He creates us in his image and we are turned into his likeness by the circumstances. So kids, this has been a great time. Thank you for Neil, thank you for Sandra, and we'll see you next Tuesday on Where in the World's Reverend Ron.